Hello everybody, welcome back to our course on data structures and algorithms. Currently, we are in the midst of taking our lists that are backed by an array and incorporating them into the larger Java framework. In the previous lesson, we looked at how to make something into a java.util.collection by implementing the collection interface. And we did that in a smart way. We extended the abstract collection class that comes from java.util package. Well, we're going to go a little further today, and we're going to and we're going to extend the abstract list class. And I got really good news for you. Remember when we had to make that iterator in the last lesson? Well, we don't have to make an iterator when we subclass the abstract list. So what I've got here is the uh, Java documentations for API version 9. And I'm just going to use the search bar to look up java.util.list. And this is an interface, and look at all the methods you have to implement in order to use this interface. Well, the good news is, is that without taking away any of the important uh, customization and the power that comes from that, we can use the abstract list. So if we click on the abstract list link, keep in mind that <clears throat> the, uh, the array backing uh, structure, all the concrete kind of uh, nitty gritty of this class is, is, is left completely abstract. But since so many of the methods are just calling each other and doing things in, you know, back and forth, as long as we implement this ab the abstract methods properly, this should work really well. Okay, so what we're looking for is not just an unmodifiable list, but a modifiable list. So let's take a look at what we got. We got to do get and size. Set at an int. So set at an index. Because if we don't do that, it just throws unsupported operation. We don't want that. We got to do add at an index and remove at an index. All right, this is really cool though. Look at this. Unlike the other abstract collection implementations, the programmer does not have to provide an iterator. So that is really cool. Iterator and list iterator. List iterator is super neat. So I'm excited about uh, getting to share that with you and not having to go through making it ourselves. Although you certainly can. If you go to my workbook at my webpage, you will see uh, some starter code to try and do a full implementation by yourself, which is certainly worthwhile. All right, well, let's get down to it. So I'm in my uh, package, that, my uh, project that we started last time, and I'm going to make a class, and I want to call this list array. And the reason why is because I want to the class array list is already taken by Java, so I just reverse the names, and that's the one I want to use to try and view it and explore it. All right, so I want I want list array to handle generics, and I want it to extend abstract list. Now uh, Java's not going to know what that is until we give it its full name, right? There it is. Now it knows it's java.util.abstractList. And it's going to get mad at me because there's a lot of stuff I have to do. Well, let's go ahead and go back here to the documentation and let's make ourselves a little shopping list about what all we need to do. All right, we got to do get and size, right? Get and size. Set add an index, add at an index, remove at an index. So set at an int e, uh, see, add at an int e, and was it remove? Yeah. And remove at an index. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's make an array of type object.
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow uh, two different ways of implementing this. I'm going to say, uh, or constructing this. I'm going to give a default constructor that's going to make the array of size 5. And I'm also going to make one that allows for an initial capacity. So that if the user knows that they're going to be using my list to store a thousand items, they don't have to go through the, the pain of having that um, expand that many times before it reaches that. And that's an option that Java recommends, so we'll do it. Now this is kind of bad programming here to put a five. That's, um, that's uh, kind of what we call a magic number. There's no description of what that five is representing. But, you know, for now, I'll just leave it. All right, we also need size in here, right? So private int size. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that the uh, size is zero on each one of them. Okay, so what I want you to do at this point is I want you to go ahead and implement all of these methods. So I've got the method signatures included here for you for each of the important methods we need to write. Get, set, at index, added index, remove at index, and size. Notice that remove, set, and get all return type E. So pause the video, fill in all those methods, and then we'll go over them. Okay, let's see how you did. So in order to add to an expandable list, we need an expand method that we can call. So let's take care of that first. So I'm going to make this array twice as big as the original. Then I'll loop through. the entire list and I'll copy everything over the temp from array and then what I'm going to do is simply change array to be equal to the temp there we go alright so size that's the easiest one. We're simply going to return our size value. Get. That one's also pretty easy. First, we need to make sure that we check to see if we need to throw an exception. If the index is less than zero, or the index is greater than or equal to the size, we need to throw a new index out of bounds exception. And I'll just leave this blank for now, but it is really a good idea to explain to someone what is the maximum index they could have offered at that moment. That really helps with someone's trying to debugging, but I'll just leave it blank for now. All right, well, I'm simply just going to return cast as an E what's at that index. We check to see if it was a proper index. If it's not, we'll throw an error, but if, it, if they get this far, because remember, throwing an error will stop the method, then we just return it. All right, set, same thing. We're not adding to our array, so the only, the, the only values that are acceptable are from zero up to, but not including the size. So all values less than zero, negative indices or size or bigger, uh, do, not, do not work. They are out of bounds. All right, so what I'll do is I'll make a value, an old value, because we return the old value that used to be there. Oh, we need to type that as an E. Remember, the array, the objects in it are all going to be of type E. We're using generics, but they're stored as an object. All right. Then I just simply write over that value. And I'll return the old one. And there we have it. 
All right, now we're going to add it index. And this one, I think, is probably our first one that's going to take a little bit of thought here. Uh, when we add at an index, though, remember, you can, have it, you can add to an index equal to size, because that's just our normal adding to the back of the list. All right, several different ways I could do this, but what I, I need to do is scoot everything over. Well, first, let's make sure we have room. So if um, size is equal to our array's length, then I can't add anything more, right? I need to expand. All right, then, uh, so it'll expand if it needs to. Then it'll come down here, and I'm going to, what I need to do is scoot everything back because we're going to insert. We're going to insert right at a certain index and move everything else back. So I'm going to say for int i is equal to size, which is actually the first indice after the last item in our list. i greater than the index I want to insert at, i minus minus. I'm going to take the array and I'm going to move everything up a row, up uh, an indice. So for example, the item that is when i is uh, index 8, we're going to take what is at index 7 and copy it up. All right, and then I'll simply write over, what is it, index, with the value. So for just a, a brief moment there, uh, there's, there's going to be duplicate values. So it, whatever the indexes they supply, after we copy and move everything back, there's going to be a duplicate at index and then the indice after index. But then that's what I write over with my value. And then I'll increase the size. Very important, we increase the size. Okay, now we're going to remove at an index. Again, we have to throw an exception if we don't have the right indice. You can't, we're not increasing the size, so it has to be greater than or equal to size. So that we throw an exception, that is. All right, so to remove, we need to get the value that's at that index. Okay, because we're going to return it to the user. And then I'm going to say for int i equals index i less than size minus 1 i plus plus. And there's a couple different ways that you could do that. Uh, but this is just how I'm doing it this time. I'm going to say array bracket i is equal to array bracket i plus 1. And that's why I stop at size minus 1. Okay, because I'm going to be doing array plus one to get that last element of size. So for a little while here, there's, act, there's actually for a good long while, there's going to be a duplicate at the end of my list because I scooted everything forward. But the end of my array now has uh, what was the last item twice. But because we decrement size, our users won't have access to that indice. And then when we add to the back again, we'll write over it. And we've gone over that, right? Okay. So um, that's good. We need to return that old value, though. Oh, you know what, though? We do need to cast it. So make sure we cast it. All right. Uh, let's see here. So I think that's it. All right. Great. OK, so at my uh, web page, if you would simply click on List Viewer and then you can download it or copy and paste that into your own class. And I went and then just go to edit add class from file and I added it right here. I go edit add class from file and um, I put it in my downloads and you can see uh, list viewer right there. All right, now the list viewer is instantiating a class called list array. It is of type list. If you want to see this work, you can change this to java.util.arraylist. And it should work just fine because that's an implementation list, but not as fun because it's not our implementation. All right, let's run it. Okay, just like the collection viewer, this is just a simple uh, little viewer to see what we've been putting in to see what it would be kind of like using our list. So I'm just going to add some. Um, 
words here. Plate, uh, you don't have to put quotes around them or anything like that. Uh, dish, cup, glass, fork, knife, spoon. All right, let's iterate our list. Oh, notice that it asked for an index. Now, I know we didn't write an iterator, but we actually get two of them. We get a list iterator and a regular iterator. So I'm going to start my iterator at index 0. So that's one of the cool things about list iterators. You can start them at any index. OK, there's our plate, dish, cup, glass, fork, knife, spoon. And you can see the little bar there representing the uh, little pipe is rep representing our indice And as I go forward. But look at this. I can also go backwards. And it turns out that when I remove, I can remove whatever I last returned. So for example, if I say, you know, next, previous, next, previous, next, previous, it will be the same thing over and over again. But um, let's see here. Let me go back to the beginning. If I go over to, let's press next one more time, and cup is returned, then the remove should remove cup. Now if I say remove again, I'm getting that illegal state exception get an illegal state exception because I didn't make a call the next or previous okay so there's glass I can remove it but if I say previous the then dish should be the one that's removed so it's pretty neat huh uh, now we have we of course we have our has next but we also have our has previous so from the front of the list I have next I don't have previous so I can't I can't go previous without getting an exception so we can uh, we can add more, some more stuff to the list. I'll just add some letters. Uh, they don't really show up again though uh, in this implementation until we run the iterator again. I'll say well, this time we'll begin at index two, and you can see it starts right there. Anyway, so that's it. That's the using the abstract list class to allow us to make custom implementations of list using our backing data structure of the array. And we still have all the power of the full Java uh, framework. So um, that's going to pretty much sum up our discussion for making lists. Next up, we're going to look at how to sort and search arrays. And that'll finish off this first unit. See you next time.